I did it. I finally did it. After a week of non-stop grinding at the Veilstone City's game corner, I can finally say I feel I've mastered this. You know, the funny thing is too, that there is a suspicious lack of information regarding the technicalities here. I decided, you know what, let's confirm what is and isn't true right now. So if you're looking to win major coinage or just looking to get that spicy TM64, this is your guide to winning big at the game corner in Veilstone City. The game corner functions exactly the same in Platinum as it does in Diamond and Pearl, but if you're curious, I am playing Platinum in this video. First and foremost, make sure you have an item called the Coin Case. I'll include a link to that guide in the description. So from Veilstone Pokemon Center, we're going to make our way to the game corner, which is this building over here with the extremely big and flashy entrance. First things first, let's go inside and buy 500 coins from this lady over here, just to start us off in the right spot. Once you visit any of the unoccupied machines, you'll see a standard slot game on the top screen. You can press X twice to start rolling the reels, and you can stop them in any order you want with the letter buttons. The goal is to, like most slot machines, get three in a row. On the bottom screen, you'll notice a nice moonlit cliffside. Believe it or not, this bottom screen is actually more important than the slot itself. And because of that, right now I'm going to flip them so the bottom screen is the bigger one. Occasionally, you'll see a Pokeball or Pokeball variant roll on the screen and wiggle at random. Without this Pokeball, you will literally never win the slots. It's rigged, seriously. But does that really surprise you in a city like Veilstone? That's right, if you want to win any coins at all, you're going to need some sort of Pokeball rolling on the bottom screen. There are different kinds, and each of them results in different coin amounts, as you can see on the side panel now. And there's nothing you could do to make a Pokeball come out, so just keep on rolling those reels and eventually you'll find one. Of course, to add another layer of RNG, occasionally the Pokeball will open up and reveal a Clefairy, and the music will change. With this Clefairy here, you are now able to win a triple seven or a triple G. In fact, you actually need that, so keep rolling for this, and when you finally do get one, we're going to the bonus round, baby. Pause. Before we start the bonus round, I want to clarify what you see on screen here. This big number in the moon represents which bonus round you are on. This number in the upper left represents how many spins you have left in the current round, and this number always starts at 15. The number in the bottom right shows how many coins you've gotten from this bonus session. Okay, okay, all right, all right, play. Okay, so here's where things get a little spicy. Remember how I told you that the bottom screen was more important? Yeah, like literally, don't even look at the top screen anymore. Clefairy is going to directly tell you which reels to stop in which order, so listen to her like she's the cute girl from math class. If you follow Clefairy very closely, you will get a triple replay and 15 coins. Of course, remember we have 15 rolls, so if you do it for each one, you can get 210 coins per bonus round, with, you know, costs included. At the end of the 15 rolls, Clefairy will either leave or stay again for another round, indicated by the giant two now. This is what you need. Track your way through as many bonus rounds as possible to get as many coins as possible. Of course, just like my parents' marriage, there is absolutely nothing you can do to control it. In fact, it's almost 100% random. The only thing that has some sort of assistance in this game is the moon. Every once in a while, you will see the moon glow either red or white. If it glows red, it is rumored that following Clefairy's order for that role specifically will cause Clefairy to withdraw at the end of the round, which we don't want. Contrarily, it is rumored that if it glows white, it will guarantee you another round if you follow Clefairy's orders specifically. Okay, also, speaking of rumors, let me confirm or deconfirm some of these for you. These rumors are from various sources, and after countless hours of grinding these slots, I swear I think I see Clefairy in my dreams, it's time to put some of these rumors to rest. Rumor number one. 
The white moon guarantees another round, and the red moon guarantees the end of the round. This rumor is false, although it is very close to true. On several cases, I have followed the orders during a white moon and still have had the bonus game end. And even more times, I follow the orders out of a red moon and still have the bonus game continue. I will admit, however, that it definitely does affect the game, and I recommend following every order during a white moon and doing the opposite of what Koferi says in a red moon. Rumor number two. The Pokeball type affects how many bonus rounds you get. This is simply not true. I've had Safari Balls, rumored to be the best, last me one or two rounds, more often than Pokeballs, and I've had Pokeballs take me to rounds 10 plus. Pokeball type does not matter. Rumor number three. The type of Clefairy affects how many bonus rounds you will get. Yeah, that's right. The Clefairy can come out of the Pokeball in three different types. The first is a regular Clefairy, which we've seen already. Another type is a Ditto disguised as a Clefairy. <laughs> Look at those cute little eyes. <clears throat> and lastly, the final type is a Shiny Clefairy. These Clefairy are rumored to affect how far you go, and once again, it's not true. My best round, personally, is a Pokeball regular Clefairy. However, it is a cute little detail and definitely fun to look at something different. Rumor number four. What Clefairy does between rounds affects future rounds. If Clefairy chooses to play another round, it will do one of a few things. It can just make its cry and start the next round automatically, or sometimes it will have Pikachu come out and dance to encourage its stay. The scariest one, however, is when it withdraws into the Pokeball and comes back out as it looks almost exactly like when it leaves. Please, don't leave, Clefairy. I really can't lose you too. What Clefairy does between rounds doesn't affect anything, and it isn't caused by anything else either. It's just simply a different animation for the same thing. So what's the point of all this anyways? Coins? Well, yeah, absolutely. It will help you get some pretty good early game TMs, but also if you get a minimum of 10 rounds played in a row, you can talk to the front counter lady and she will grant you TM64 explosion once per save file despite her misleading aftertext. Be careful though, if you get the 10 rounds, do not, listen to me, seriously, listen closely, do not quit the slots to get your reward. Keep playing until you lose and the Clefairy withdraws, then you can leave the slots. If you don't, the lady won't recognize your 10 rounds and you've done all that hard work for nothing. Also, if you come over here to this plaque, you can see your highest round count. Okay, so before we close out here, let me do a quick little TLDR version of everything for those of you who missed it. Step 1. Get a coin case. Step 2. Start a game at the slots. Step 3. Hope for a Clefairy to pop out of a Pokeball. Step 4. Get a Triple Seven or Triple G to start the bonus game. Step 5. Follow Clefairy's commands always, unless it's the Red Moon, in which case you do the exact opposite for that spin only. Step 6. Profit. So, that's pretty much it for this video. That was definitely quite the grind, but also, I respect it as it's the last game corner we've had in a Pokemon game due to gambling laws. I really did enjoy my time learning about a feature that honestly I didn't even know existed, and I look forward to learning even more things in the future. BDSP, I know you won't, but I hope you have the game corner in Veilstone City. Techno's out. What? <laughs>